Hello and welcome to a video on MOSFET bias structures. In this video we will look, be looking at a couple of ways how to bias our MOSFETs. We will look at the NPN and PNP um, simultaneously. So we will look at the self bias, the voltage divider bias, um, the voltage divider bias of some stabilization, then the source bias for dual rail and then lastly just a quick look at the current source but for all of these we will be looking at simulation so we will quickly discuss um, like the self bias and then look at simulations of the self bias right so firstly we are going to use a matched NMOS and PMOS. Now typically you match your NMOSs and PMOSs in chip applications using your widths and lengths so they are um, similar and a process your VTN and VTP will be equivalent and the VTP will just be negative. So in all of the problems we will be designing for a drain current of 1 milliampere we will use a transconductance of 10 milliamperes per volt squared for both transistors and a VTP of 1.5 volts. So if we apply um, the equations for the saturation region, since we are assuming that we are um, building amplifiers, our gate source voltage and our source gate voltage will be 1.94 volts in all of the problems. Okay, so that's a cool thing of matching transistors is that your voltages um, to switch them on, on for the same current is exactly the same. Okay, so I will not be going through this every time know that our gate source voltage or our source gate voltage that we want in every problem is 1.94 volts okay and that is to have a drain current of 1 milliamp right so the self bias of the MOSFET is kind of a cool trick that you can do and that is, there is no current flowing in the gate here. The only thing why you will put this resistor here is so that you can do a Kirchhoff's voltage from VDD down to ground right there. So that gives you a DC voltage path. Um, same with the PMOS, the structure is just basically flipped around right so since there is no current flowing in this resistor you can choose choose it whatever you want and it doesn't really matter okay so typically you choose that resistor to be as large as possible 1 meg 10 meg 100 kilo ohms wherever you might um feel it you choose it up there okay so the first equation we can see from this is vdd is idrd drain current flowing here plus our drain source voltage right there okay so very similar stuff to what we had with the bjt the second one is down here um, at the back of a transistor, so it is again IDRD plus IGRG plus VGS, but IG is zero. So if we work with the two equations together, we'll see that our gate source voltage and our drain source voltage is always equal to one another. So one of the advantages of a self bias is that your 
transistor will always be in the saturation region. Okay, now the problem that you have with this is this is typically a very small voltage and we can't choose our VDS equal to VDD over 2 like that we want um, if we want to do maximum output swings um, for amplifiers. Okay, so this is one of the things you don't have so much freedom in your design. But designing this is relatively easy and you just take your VDD voltage, subtract the VGS that you calculated, divide it by the current that you want and that gives your drain voltage. Right, so we have a similar set up for the PMOS, it yields exactly the same equations. So if we were to design with a 15 volt rail for 1 milliampere, having VGS and VSG 1.94 volts, we can choose our gate at 1 mega ohm and if we calculate our RD value, it will be 13.6 kilo ohms, or the closest E12 is 12 kilo ohms. So, very easy, but the problem is that our drain source and gate source voltages will be the same for this amplifier. Right, to take it one step further, is you can add a small source resistor which will give you a bit more stability um, in, in, in choosing your current so it's not um, as uh, how can I put this you, you can better choose your RD and then the remainder will fall on on RS but you still don't have the choice of your VDS voltage. So it just gives a little bit more freedom in selecting components and such. So RD will be VDD minus VG. So VG is the voltage sitting up here to ground. So that is VS plus our VGS sitting right here. That is our gate voltage. And with this, you can directly choose your current. You pick a VS divided by ID, and you have your RS value. And the only thing that changed here is the VG when we calculate our RD value. Okay, so quick example. Let's take again 15 volts for our rail. Let's say we want VS to be 2 volts. So 2 volts sitting at this point right here. 1.94 volts still. Choose RG a large value. And we can find our RS directly. And that is 2 divided by 1 milliampere. And that will give us uh, E12. Of 2.2 kilo ohms or 1.8 kilo ohms, depending on which way you want to choose it. Then you can calculate your VG value and it will be slightly higher due to this 0.2 um, ohms right here, 0.2 kilo ohms. And from that, you can calculate your RD value, gives you 10.86 kilo ohms. 12 kilo ohms E12, again like the previous problem. Okay, so let's look at these two in a simulation. Let's do that first, then we can look at these observations. 
So in my first simulation here, I have set up a model for the NMOS as KP10 VTO 1.5. If this was a PMOS, you would make this minus 1.5. Um, so we modeled our transistor and let's run this and see what results we have. So right here we have about 1.1 milliampere flowing. No current really in, in the gate. So the simulator doesn't even know what to do with this current measurement. But if you measure the voltage right here, we're sitting at 1.966 volts. Um, and we did calculate the VGS as 1.94, so this is fairly close. So note that I'm measuring right here, and if we measure there, it's the same voltage. Okay, so having 15 volts here, we don't really have a swing of this amplifier okay so not really good on the output swing okay let's look at the one with source resistor note that we have with rs much better control over our drain current now and if we measure here and measure here our gate voltage and our um, drain voltage is exactly the same now, which means that our VGS and VDS is still the same in this configuration. So the only thing is the improvement here with choosing our drain current a bit better and having it stabilized um, a little bit more. So that is the NMOS. Let's have a look at the PMOS. Okay, so PMOS VTO minus 1.5 and the model is just called PMOS. We have the same setup. If we run it, look that VGS is sitting, uh, VSG is sitting here on top. 1.1 milliampere like we measured with uh, um, NMOS so if we look at these two voltages we have the same 15 minus 13.035 will give us something in the range of 1.94 um, volts that we we had previously and with a stabilization we have exactly the same result for the NMOS and the PMOS. Okay, let's look at our observations. All right, so this is a very simple bias solution with a very large input impedance. You are ensured that it's always in saturation mode, so it's always amplifier, but you have no freedom around the output swing. Um, and adding a source resistor gives you a little bit more freedom and bias stability. So self-bias is not a very good solution. It is a solution. Right. That brings us to the voltage divider bias. So We will first be looking at this with just the two resistors and then we will add a, a source resistor and then go to the simulations. So first thing that you notice, if we take our drain current right here, we have IDRD plus VDS and that is our VDD. So that's our first Kirchhoff's loop. The second one, is if we want our VGS value, it is the same voltage sitting here over our second gate resistor. Okay, so this bias is purely 
a voltage divider. Since there is no current flowing in there, it's purely voltage division. Okay, so this VGS will be equal to that 1.9 for that we calculated for the 1 milliampere. Okay, now to design these two resistors here at the back, there is generally two solutions. So for the common emitter, common collector kind of configuration, so for the MOSFET, the common source and um, common drain connections, your input impedance will be relying on these two resistors. Right, so the parallel combination of them will be your input impedance. So you can design for a specific input impedance and you will be using these two equations simultaneously. Method two is when you're given a small current that should be flowing through both of these resistors, then VDD over that current is the sum of these two resistances and the typical approach again is to choose VDD over 2 is your IDRD is equal to your VDS voltage. Okay, right. Your drain current for this configuration is very dependent on your VGS voltage. So without a resistor here, a source resistor, this is not very stable. It's very um, very finicky with your resistor choices here at the back. Okay, so if you choose your resistor um, too far to the one side, your drain current will be changing by a lot. Okay, so we will also be looking at that in our simulation. So for our first example, designing for a 12 volt rail for 1 milliampere and let's for the first one go with 100 microamperes flowing through RG1 and RG2 that gives us 120 kilo ohms for the combination our voltage divider will be equal to our VGS voltage right here so um, VDD RG2 over RG2 plus RG1. We can combine this voltage divider and this idea of a current right here to get equations for our two resistors. So if you combine them, you will find that VG2 is our gate voltage um, or our VGS over the current. So that is 19.4 kilo ohms. And here we have a choice to 18 kilo ohms and 22 kilo ohms. And then you can either subtract this um, resistance from the 120k to get your final result, or you can have an equation that says RG1 is VDD minus VG over the current that gives you 100.6 kilo ohms, and the standard value is just 100 kilo ohms like that okay and for your rd just vdd over two and that will give you six kilo ohm resistance with one milliampere here and a 5.6 k is your rd value okay this one will determine your gain later on um, when we actually do amplifiers so the design is as simple as that. Let's have a look at our um, added source resistance before we look at the simulations. So if we add a source resistor, our first loop right here changes a little bit. So we have ID flowing through both of these resistors. So we have ID RD plus VDS plus ID RS. Okay, note now that VS plus VGS is our gate voltage. 
that we had in the previous problem. So you can use these equations um, directly. And that is still a voltage divider. Um, so the voltage sitting over this resistor will be the voltage sitting over the VGS and um, IDRS. Okay, or VS if you look at that point right there. Right, so again, you can use the two methods, input impedance or the current flowing. Important to note, typically if you don't know what the voltages is, you will choose your IDRD equal to your IDRS equal to VDD divided by 3. Um, but remember that there is cases where IDRS is chosen a smaller voltage value, but you always try to keep the voltages um, equivalent across the drain resistor and the drain source voltage. Okay, so there is usually two options here. So the one if you don't know what to choose, and if a source voltage is given to you, remember that this bottom equation is not valid then. Right, so let's look at a quick design. So 12 volt rail, still one milliampere, designed for a source of two volts. And we need to design for input impedance of 100 kilo ohms. Okay, so we can directly go for Vs is equal to IDRS. That gives us a 2.2 kilo ohm resistance. And our Vs will be sitting at 2.2 volts then. And our VG voltage will then be 4.14 volts. And with this we have our two equations that we need to satisfy simultaneously. So the input impedance will be the parallel combination as 100K and we have our voltage divider. So you can combine these equations um, if you don't like solving, solving them simultaneously. So RG1 will be VDD over VG multiplied by your input impedance. And in this case, we end up having a 270 kilo ohms um, resistor. Then we can do a reverse um, parallel combination. So 1 over Z in minus 1 over RG. And we get our RG2 value as 150 kilo ohms. Okay, so those are our bias stabilization resistors, our bias resistors, and now lastly our drain resistor. So VDD minus VS, this would be 10 volts. Oh, since this is 2.2, it will be 4.9 if we calculate this. And dividing with 1 milliampere, we get our RD value as 4.9 kilo ohms, and we can choose it as 4.7 kilo ohms. Right, let's look at the simulations for um, these two configurations. Right, so here is our two solutions. Let's run this and have a look. And you'll find that with the 18 kilo ohm selection, this is very far away from one milliampere. If we change this to 22 kilo ohms, it will be far above our one milliampere. Okay, so this resistor value um, is very sensitive. So um, if you can't choose this exactly, this amplifier will not be biased um, where you want it to be. 
biased. Okay, this second connection right here, see that this is much closer to one milliampere, even if we choose this 1.8, that is still fairly close. Um, but this is close to one milliampere. Okay, so this stabilization right here helps out uh, a lot and takes away some of the sensitivity for your components. Okay, you will find that most designs will just take the, the two resistors like this and go with it. You don't have to include the source resistor, but if you want things to be very, very nice, you can include the source resistor in your designs. Just remember that you have to bypass it um, or else you're gonna lose some of your gain. And the MOSFET has much less gain than the BJTs have. Um, so unless you're trying to stabilize the gain with a source resistor, don't forget to, to bypass it. Um, yeah, so this is the NMOS. Let's have a look at the PMOSes. So as you can see, the PMOS is the same structure. It's just kind of flipped around um, to work. So if we run this, you'll see that we have exactly the same problem with our um, our currents and here with this e extra source resistor it is much closer to one milliamp right so that is the the PMOS so some Observations, we have a very stable bias method with a source resistor. So a source resistor takes away some of our sensitivity. Um, our input impedance is adjustable or as high as possible. And we can design for maximum swing with a voltage divider bias. Right, dual rail biasing. So a positive and a negative, and our MOS in between. So we have, if we look from here to here, we have VDD is IDRD plus VDS plus IDRS plus VSS. Um, and if we look in, in this loop right here, we have IG, RG plus VGS plus IDRS plus VSS. And with IG being zero, this resistor is just to give us a, a closed loop for our, um, for our voltage loop so that we have a path to ground basically. So we have VGS plus IDRS plus VSS. And that will give us that our source resistor is minus VSS minus VGS over ID. So our source resistor here is purely to bias our MOSFET. Okay, with that, this point right here will be typically be equal to um, minus your VGS value. Um, so that's typically close to zero ish. So we try to have these two voltages up here to be the same as always. And that is typically your VDD voltage divided by two. So that is IDRD is equal to your VDS, uh, your second design equation and your input impedance. If you have a amplifier coming from this side is equal to the resistor that you choose right here. 
So the dual gives you absolute freedom um, for your biasing, your input impedance, and your output swing. Right, so let's look at an example. So designing with plus minus 10 volt rails. Um, and designing for 100 kilo ohm input impedance. Let's start with VDS is ID, RD is VDD over 2 is 5 volts. That will give us a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. If we go with a standard. Our VGS 1.94 as we calculated in the beginning. So minus minus 10 is 10 minus 1.9 4 volts over 1 milli is 8.06 kilo ohms. That gives us 8.2 kilo ohms E12. And we just choose our gate resistor equal to 100 kilo ohms that we want our input impedance to be. So let's have a look at our simulations. Right, so first up our NMOS. That is very close to one milliampere. If we look at the voltage right here, minus 1.94 is what I said it would be. Um, and if we go right here, that is very close to half VDD right there. And again, no current flowing here, no voltage. This is essentially a zero point. And that is the design for the NMOS. Let's have a look at the PMOS. Right, our PMOS, um, let's run this. we have exactly the same result. Our resistors just change positions, basically. Um, and that's it. So, in general, what goes for the NMOS goes for the PMOS. You just have to have your structure the right way around. Okay, let's look at some conclusions. So, the dual rail is a very stable biasing method with selectable input impedance. You can design for maximum swing. It is very easy to design. You have all the degrees of freedom with a dual rail bias that you can wish for um, for MOSFETs. Right, let's have a look at two other um, structures and that is when we use a current source instead of a source resistor. Right, so even when using a current source you need to add this gate resistor right here to finish the loop and what the current source looks like is you will have one transistor on this side, one on this side and note that both of them shares the same VGS value. So this one becomes a reference for this transistor right here. So if this transistor is biased for one milliampere, this transistor is biased for one milliampere. Right. So you'll see here that our drain and our gate is directly connected. Looks very much like the resistor that we had in our um, in our self bias. It's just here it is a connection and not a resistor. And this makes that your VGS and VDS values is exactly the same. So in this case you are still designing for 1.9 4 volts right here. 
Okay, so minus minus 10 minus 1.94 is going to give you that 8.2 kilo ohm resistor that we already saw as a source resistor um, right here. Okay, but current sources gives you very, very good stability. Okay, um, so this is your reference resistor to get your drain current flowing here, which will get the same drain current flowing on this side. Okay, so whenever you see figures with current sources, it's actually some structure that looks like, like this. And the transistors are biasing one another um, like that. Same for the PMOS. Um, this is actually a current source. This would rather be a current sink, but same thing. And for this one, you have your PMOSs and the voltages here on top is the same. Get the same resistor um, result like that. So let's quickly have a look at the simulations for these. And then we are finished with this uh, video. So first up, we have our NMOSes. We run this. If I measure down here, you have minus 8.05. So from here to there is that 1.9 volts that we want. Here we have 982 microamps flowing. Here we have roughly the same on the other side. So that's how the current source works. Actually very, very easy to use current sources. Um, makes life very easy if you learn how to use this for, for, for BJTs. Um, but in any case, so that's the NMOS. Let's have a look at the PMOS. So PMOS structure sitting up there. It's the equivalent resistor, uh, equivalent voltage that we saw in the NMOS. Um, just this is positive now. Same current, same current. The structures are for lack of a better word, identical. Um, so, yes, that is it for the biasing structure for MOS devices. Um, thank you for watching and see you in a next video.